only the crown jewel of a much larger system. A system full of stunning vistas, rich in contrasts. This is one of the most dramatic and unexpected landscapes in North America. You get vast grasslands, wetlands, Flowing streams, massive dunes, and rugged alpine mountains, all together in one dramatic landscape of unparalleled natural diversity. Intricately entwined, these diverse landscapes comprise Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. of a silent storm. Winter blankets the great sand dunes. Few visitors are here to witness the snow. And the crystals melt quickly, leaving little trace. But the secret season is pivotal to sustaining the many landscapes of Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Thousands of feet above the dunes, the peaks of the nearby Sangre de Cristo Mountains lie snow-capped nine months out of the year. The snows that fall in the winter time are the beginning of the dunes year. Then the spring thaw takes place. Enormous amounts of water begin to flow to the dune system, bringing life to everything it touches. In late spring, the winter snow is still melting into Upper Sand Creek Lake. From this alpine lake at 11,500 feet, a waterway emerges that is crucial to the valley below. Sand Creek tumbles through conifer forests, traveling a landscape completely unlike the dune field. But still a critical part of Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Creek's mountain journey ends as it finds the valley floor, where it loops around the northwestern edge of the Great Sand Dunes. Across the dune field to the east, the waters of Menno Creek have followed a similar path. 
Together, these creeks wrap like arms around the great sand dunes. At the peak of the spring runoff, the waters are more river than creek, holding in their embrace the tallest sand dunes on the continent. How they do so is one of the marvels of this place. Prevailing winds in the San Luis Valley blow the dune sands northeast toward the mountains, literally tons of sand in the windy season of spring alone. Much of it is captured by Sand Creek and Medno Creek, and in their swift currents return to the valley floor. In this way, these streams play a vital role in maintaining the dune field. It is a lot like a sand recycler, and it supplies the edges of the dune pool with abundant sand and creates the impressive features that uh, people come to Greek sand dunes to see. This is the surprising paradox of the Great Sand Dunes. A high altitude desert that is highly dependent on water. In the spring melt-off, the laughing voices of children almost drown out the sounds of the creek. They splash and burrow into what seems a bottomless supply of water and sand. Few realize they are surfing in one of the wonders of the world. For something astonishing and rare is sweeping through these streams. Thousands of miles from the coast, this Rocky Mountain stream is pulsing with small but curious waves, a phenomenon called surge flow. This has been likened to taking the pulse of the stream. For scientists, Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve is an outdoor laboratory with endless potential for study. So we're at the velocity of 1.46 uh, feet per second. On the Sandy Creek bottom, the fast-flowing current pushes sand grains into small underwater ridges called anti-dunes. Like tiny dams, anti-dunes trap water until they finally break. These surges are literally earth-moving events. So rare, they occur only a few places on the planet. But water possesses an even greater power. In a land where spring and summer are brief, and survival is a struggle against drought, Water holds the gift of life. Some of the smallest creatures in this vast and arid landscape are the most remarkable. The native Great Sand Dunes tiger beetle is found nowhere else on Earth. Perfectly adapted for this environment, tiger beetles thrive in the sparse vegetation of the open dune field. To researchers, the cool summer nights reveal another universe of life. Where are you guys? the nocturnal residents of the dunes. The giant sand treader camel cricket is one of a handful of insects that have adapted to this harsh environment. Some are so specific to certain areas of the sand dunes, it's like they're very restricted to the habitat type. It's not just a big pile of sand, I mean, it's a pretty useful living area. The exuberance of spring and summer 
spills everywhere. The great sand dunes have a way of bringing out the child in everyone and in every generation. Well, it was a big playhouse. Jack Williams' family homesteaded in the area. He remembers it as his secret playground. Eddie Wellington and I would climb that big dune down there whenever we were there so that we could sail off of it. That's great. But this playground can quickly turn wild with a simple turn of the weather or change of the season. In the summer, sand temperatures can soar to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And the force of the wind can be seen and felt. While spring is the windiest season, summer storms can bring gusts up to 50 miles an hour. Hinting at the answer to the most asked question at the Great Sand Dunes. Why is there so much sand in Colorado? Just try to comprehend why, why it's in here in the most all these mountains. Scientists believe that over time, massive amounts of sand and sediment, originating mostly in the San Juan Mountains, were carried by streams into the San Luis Valley. Prevailing southwesterly winds bounce the sand grains to the northeast. At the western face of the Sangre de Cristos, the sand was trapped in a low curve of the mountains. Opposing northeasterly winds whipped it into tall dunes and continue to do so today. These dunes, uh, therefore, move vertically or grow, grow vertically. We're sitting on the, one of the tallest dunes in North America. <laughs> tower up to 750 feet, covering some 30 square miles. But amazingly, the massive dunes represent only 11% of the sand deposit, which blankets more than 300 square miles. In some places, the sand extends an additional 350 feet below the creek bed surface. Wow. While well, geologists oh, believe there is little new sand being introduced into the system today, there is no question this is a work in progress. Moving sand, redepositing it, the wind is ceaselessly carving a sculpture that, while always changing, remains in perfect balance. The beauty of this place has drawn people to the dunes for hundreds, even thousands of years. Some of the first people in this region may have seen these dunes much as they appear today. 11,000 years ago, Clovis people hunted mammoths nearby. Later, Ute and Apache people stripped bark off ponderosa pines to use for food and medicine. Some of these peeled trees still stand near Medino Creek, connecting modern tribal members with part of their past. Spanish explorers entered the San Luis Valley in the 1600s, followed by Spanish and Mexican settlers who built homes and ranches. They endowed the area with Hispanic culture and language, which endures today. With places like Sangre de Cristo, or Blood of Christ Mountains, Medno, or Sand Hill Creek.
Pueblo settlers soon followed, many looking for gold in the nearby mountains. Today, the handprints of homesteaders are slowly fading. Native plants and animals are reclaiming ranch lands as their own. By August, Medino Creek is a ghost of what it once was. The summer sun has melted the snow in the high country. And the water that just weeks ago surged through here in waves is reduced to a trickle. The dried earth now waits quietly for late summer storms. When the rains come, the land responds almost overnight. And in the stream beds, a bit of magic. The water in Medino Creek and Sand Creek seems to slip away. But the water is still here within the system. Some of it will even reappear on the other side of the dunes. If the great sand dunes seem like the desert of myth, this is the oasis. These lakes and wetlands are a bejeweled secret of the great sand dunes. All year round, snowmelt, rainfall, and creek water have been seeping into massive underground aquifers. Years later, some of it will resurface south and west of the dune field. Although these lakes are certainly deepest during the snowmelt of spring, even in late summer, the wetlands are lush and green. This is no mirage. The creek water that slipped away now supports a diversity of life not commonly seen in the high mountain desert. As birds gather to migrate south, up on Medino Pass, the golden aspens whisper of autumn. The chilly winds signal an early winter and remind us of the cycle that links these landscapes. Woven together by the rhythms of wind, water, and changing season. So welcome again to the wilderness of Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Every autumn, a new generation of school children is introduced to the wonders of Great Sand Dunes. I want you to think of one thing that you really like about nature here. The sand, how it was formed. How it was formed. The nice heat. The heat, awesome. The, the mount, how the sand was formed in the mountains. For any student of nature, this is a place to discover something very personal about the beauty in the world. I like the animal tracks. I like the birds and the animals. It is that personal connection that draws many people to return to the dunes and to share the experience with others. And for anyone who accepts the challenge, climbing the dunes is a struggle. Quickly discovered by those new to the dunes, and those who know them well, The reward is a panoramic view of one of the rarest natural systems on Earth, linking jagged peaks to sandy desert to lush wetland. With the understanding of the interdependence and vulnerability of these varied landscapes, Congress established Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve expanding the boundaries to include components of the entire dune system. This extraordinary place 
holds a promise for future generations that the days will continue to reveal nature's wonders and the nights will fall quiet and still. From sand to summit, this is Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Well, the campground was full. Well, it is Saturday after all in July, so I'm out of luck. <laughs>